Good morning, good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. We want to talk about listening in the silence this morning. Listening in the silence. Um, the prophet Zephaniah, the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah had come to Israel as a young man, a young prophet giving a prophecy that pointed out the sins of Israel, that pointed out the fact that um, uh, they had defied God and they had fallen away from God, Judah rather, particularly the nation, the southern nation of Judah had fallen away from God. The nation's spiritual life was corrupted and characterized by a commingling of beliefs and practices that included sexual immorality, fertility rites, astrology, superstition, uh, so kind of like the same things that are going on in the United States today. We idolize, um, we're still living under the uh, shadow of Donald Trump in, and, and the reason I say that is there is a problem in the evangelical church with setting up an idolatry of materialism, an idolatry of Trumpism. Um, uh, the, the church, the people of God, should never follow someone who's obviously not in line with Christian principles, with the principles of Christ Jesus, with the principles of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And so we want to, and, and the thing is how to come out of it. We have to listen for God's voice in the midst of all the madness and mayhem that is going on in the world. Let me read you a scripture from Zephaniah, Zephaniah 1 and 7. It says, be silent, be silent. We're still in our 10 days of silence, of taking 15 minutes a day. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. He's consecrated us as his people. Yes, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, but most certainly the practice of his word. God instructs us to be silent before him, to listen, amen, for him, because his day, the day of the Lord, the day of judgment is at hand. We are being judged. We, we wonder why all of these things are happening. It's because the church, the people of God, amen, are out of line with God, amen. Be silent. It's a be silent before the Lord is a summons to listen. It's a call to listen and to acknowledge the Lord. Activity, our activity can get in the way of hearing what God is saying and doing. Our busyness is being driven by a culture that overvalues what can be achieved, where worth is associated by what is done, and that busyness can hinder us as believers, hinder our being with God, amen, hinder our um, acknowledging his presence, amen. The call to silence is a contemplative call to pay attention to God, to be still in the middle of life's activities and to draw near to the one in whom we live, move, and have our entire being. Today, try, try the experiment of living an entire day. I know we're going through these 10 days of taking 15 minutes, but at some point, try uh, to live an entire day in silence. And as we do that, find new ways to express ourselves to those around us, to think about the role of words in our lives. Where are words 
um, strengthening your relationship with God and others? Where are words that obscure and hinder your relationship with God and others? Meditate. Contemplate these things. Wow, wow, wow. It, it is something that we need and to do and we must practice. Practice, don't, don't be silent just for the sake of being silent. We are silent so that we may listen and discern, recognize the voice of God. We must come to recognize God's voice. We must distinguish God's voice from our flesh because sometimes that can fool us, fool us. We must distinguish God's voice from the world. Many people, as I've um, been in my ministerial career of getting close to 40 years, it is um, many don't recognize the voice of God. They mistake the voice of the world for the voice of God. They mistake the voice of their flesh for the voice of God. Uh, they even, um, and most of the time when Satan comes with his voice, when he puts things in front of us, uh, sometimes it's hard to distinguish that if you are not practicing the art and the science of recognizing God's voice. We must practice that. That's why we must study the Bible so we can hear God's voice in his word. Be silent. Be still. And see Almighty God. Be still and see the glory of Almighty God. God bless you. Shall we pray? Lord, teach us to listen. Lord, the times are noisy and our ears are weary and tired with the thousands of sounds that continually assault us. Give us the spirit of Samuel when he said to thee, speak for thy servant, hear it. Let us hear you, Lord God, speaking in our hearts. Let us get used to the sound of your voice, O God, that its tones may be familiar when the sounds of the earth die away and the only sound will be the music of thy soothing, silent voice. Touch us today that we may recognize your voice and distinguish it from all those other voices that vie for our attention. We offer this prayer in the mighty matchless name, character and nature of Jesus, we pray. And for your glory, we say, amen. Be blessed today. God bless you. I see you all out there. Let us recognize God's voice. Take your 15 minutes to be silent today. And those of you who can, try to be silent for 24 hours. Um, or, or, or at least let the words that you speak be minimal and let them be effective, let them be gracious words, amen, that they may strengthen your relationship with God and with our fellow human beings. God bless you and keep you. Remember this, Pastor Phil loves you, but God loves you infinitely more. Be blessed.